We all know the story of Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi prodigy who became Sith Lord but eventually returned to the light. Anakin's choices affected the entire galaxy, shaping a whole epoch of history. But he wasn't the first Jedi to follow such a path, nor was he the first to have had such a massive impact on the galaxy. 4,000 years before the rise of the Empire, another Jedi went on a journey not unlike Anakin's. His name was Ulic Keldroma, and in this video, we'll be telling you of his rise, fall, and redemption. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Ulic Keldroma was the eldest son of the famed Jedi Master Lien Tai Keldroma. He, along with his brother Kay and cousin Duron, were found to be force sensitive at an early age, and Ulic entered training on Arcania under the famed Jedi Master Arca Jet. In those days, the Jedi Order was nothing like its Clone Wars era counterpart. The Order was much more loosely organized, and though it was still run by a Jedi Council based on the Order's homeworld of Ossus, most Jedi were scattered across the galaxy, acting as watchmen on various Republic worlds. In those days, the Sith were believed to have been extinct for centuries, and thus, the Jedi were much less vigilant about the dark side. This made them more tolerant of romantic relationships, allowing Force-sensitive bloodlines to flourish in the Jedi ranks. They were also much less strict about the perceived sanctity of the Master-Padawan relationship, allowing Masters to train multiple students at once. Arka Jeth, for instance, trained not only Ulic and Kei Koldroma, but also the Twi'lek Jedi Tot Donita. All three Jedi were incredibly skilled, but Ulic was the strongest of them all, with a strong connection to the Force, a natural gift for lightsaber combat, and a good grasp on a wide variety of other skills. By 4000 BBY, he and his fellow apprentices were deemed ready to carry out missions without the aid of a Jedi Master, and Master Arka sent them to intervene in the Beast Wars of Onderon. On Onderon, the Keldromas and Donita were initially welcomed by Queen Aminoa of Aziz, who had requested Jedi assistance in defending her city from the Beast Riders, a rival civilization of criminals who had been exiled from Aziz and had survived in the jungles by taming Onderon's dangerous beasts. Shortly after the Jedi arrived, Aminoa's daughter, Princess Galia, was kidnapped by the Beast Riders. Ulic and his fellow apprentices pursued the kidnappers and learned that the Beast Riders had taken Galia to marry Oron Kira, their prince. The Jedi tracked the Beast Riders to their stronghold and charged into the middle of the ceremony, only to be met with protest from Princess Galia. Galia revealed that she was marrying Kira willingly because her mother and the rest of the Onderonian royalty were Sith cultists loyal to the ancient Dark Lord Freedon Nad, who had once ruled Aziz. The criminals the Beast Riders were descended from had been rebels against Nad's rule, cast out for their opposition to the Dark Side. Galia wanted to join their cause and help them overthrow her mother, and the Jedi followed suit. Ulic attempted to negotiate a peaceful settlement with Queen Aminoa first, but when he and the other Jedi returned to Aziz, the situation quickly went sideways. Aminoa revealed herself to be a powerful user of the Dark Side, and used her powers to stun the Jedi even as the Beast Riders began their assault. However, the tidy intervention of Master Arka turned the tide, allowing the Beast Riders to overthrow Aminoa and unite Onderon's two peoples under Galia and Oron Kira. Ulic, Kay, and Tot were all promoted to Jedi Knight following the resolution of the Beast Wars. For the next two years, they stayed on Onderon to protect the new queen. Aminoa had died at the end of the Beast Wars, but despite her passing, the pull of the dark side still swung over Aziz, and Master Arka and his former students were determined to find its source. After a massive uprising of Sith cultists in Aziz, the Jedi discovered that these Nardists were being led by King Omen, Aminoa's husband, who had been proclaimed dead years prior, but was still very much alive thanks to the help of the Spectre of Freedon Nat. With the help of a unit of Republic rocket jumpers and new Jedi apprentice Nomi Sunrider, Ulic and the others managed to defeat King Omen while Arka drove off the spirit of Freedon Nat. For the next year or so, Onderon had peace, and Ulic Keldroma and his allies remained on the planet, honing their skills in the planet's jungles. 
During this time, Ulic became closer with Nomi Sunrider, who quickly fit into his little band of young Jedi Knights. But this peace didn't last forever. About a year after the end of the Freedonad Uprising, another group of Sith cultists, the Krath, seized power in the Empress Teta system. These Krath were led by Satal and Alima Kito, Darkseid adepts who had been regular visitors to Onderon before they formed their own Darkseid cult. As Arka, Ulic, and the other Jedi suspected Freedonad's influence in their uprising, they joined the Republic fleet bound for Sinegar, the heart of the Krath's power. The joint Republic Jedi assault on Sinegar failed, however, thanks to Alima Kito's skill with Sith sorcery, which allowed her to create powerful illusions and throw the Republic fleet into disarray. The Republic pulled back and the Jedi were recalled to Deneba, where Jedi from all over the galaxy were gathering to discuss the threat of the Krath. At the convocation, many Jedi advocated for an all-out assault against the Krath but Ulic instead argued that a Jedi should be sent to infiltrate the Krath and destroy them from within. His plan was met with horror from many of the Jedi present, but before an alternative plan could be determined, the Convocation was attacked by Krath war droids. The Jedi eventually vanquished the deadly machines, but not before they managed to take out a number of the assembled Jedi, including Arka Jet. Master Arka died in Ulic's arms, and Ulic, consumed by grief, vowed to avenge him. Ulic decided to carry out his plan regardless of whether or not the other Jedi approved. He parted with Nomi Sunrider and his brother Kay and travelled to the Iron Citadel in Sinegar where he met with the Kido siblings and swore his allegiance to them. The Kidos drugged and imprisoned Keldroma anyway, torturing him to determine his true motives. Satal openly distrusted Ulic and wanted him killed, but his sister, Alima, had other plans. She began to draw Ulic toward the dark side, seducing the Jedi Knight and quietly inflaming his anger over Master Arka's death. She ultimately manipulated Ulic into killing Satal in cold blood and falling to the dark side. Then, she invited him to join her as the new leader of the Krath. Eventually, Kay, Nomi, and the other Jedi came to rescue Ulic, but by that point, he was tightly ensnared in the dark side script and had become disillusioned with the Republic, and he lashed out at them, telling them to leave. Reluctantly, they left Ulic to his fate, but not long afterwards, another Jedi arrived, Exar Kun, who himself had fallen to the dark side. Kun had conquered the Seth remnants of Yavin 4, and saw Ulic and Krath as a threat to his power, so he had travelled to Sinegar to put an end to the rival cult. Kun and Ulic fought a ferocious lightsaber duel in the Iron Citadel, but their battle was brought to a sudden end by a shared vision of ancient Korriban. In this vision, the spectre of Sith Lord Marka Ragnos anointed both fallen Jedi the new Dark Lords of the Sith, proclaiming that, because of them, the Sith would never die. Once the vision faded, Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma joined forces, vowing to bring down the galaxy between them, to destroy the Republic and begin a new Golden Age of the Sith. While Exar Kun set out to rally his Masasi warriors and recruit Jedi to join his new Sith Brotherhood, Ulic Keldroma amassed the armies of Krath. They and their followers went to war against the Republic, beginning the Great Sith War with a series of attacks on the Tyon Cluster. In a campaign known as the Krath Holy Crusade, Keldroma's forces ran roughshod across Republic space, throwing the galaxy into chaos. After defeating Mandalore the Indomitable in ritual combat at Kue, Keldroma added the might of the Mandalorian Crusaders to his already formidable fleet, which he used to capture Forost, a major Republic shipyard. From Forost, Keldroma attacked Coruscant itself, attempting to kill the Republic's top military leaders and cripple the Senate. However, the attack failed and Ulic was captured by the Jedi. Hoping to boost morale in the fight against the Sith, the Jedi allowed the Supreme Chancellor to put Ulic Keldroma on trial before the Galactic Senate. On the stand, Ulic was defiant and the Supreme Chancellor sought the death penalty for him. The trial was interrupted by the sudden appearance of Exar Kun, however, who, backed by Mandalore and a few Masasi, waltzed right into the Senate chamber, murdered the Supreme Chancellor in front of everyone, freed Ulric and walked right back out. 
This spectacle crushed Republic morale, and with Ulik free, he and Kun began a new offensive. After escaping Coruscant, Kun and Keldroma sent Ali Maketo on a mission to the Kron Cluster, where she was to activate an ancient Sith soup weapon and destroy a Jedi fleet. The power of the weapon caused the 10 stars of the cluster to all supernova at once, which killed Alima, the Jedi she was battling, and threatened to destroy Ossus, which had been the Sith's true objective the whole time. As the Jedi scrambled to evacuate Ossus, Kun and Keldroma arrived to loot the place. Kun took what he wanted and returned to his stronghold on Yavin 4, but Keldroma ran into Kay, who refused to let him pass. In anger, Ulik fought and killed his own brother. When Ulik realized what he had done, he was horrified. Nomi arrived not long after, and upon finding Ulik standing over the body of his brother, she cut him off from the force and took him prisoner. Consumed by regret and self-loathing, Ulik did not resist. After the Republic destroyed the Krath fleet at Kemplex 9, Ulik even helped the Jedi track down Exar Kun, though the Dark Lord seemingly destroyed himself in a ritual before they could arrive. Either way, the Great Sith War ended with the Republic victory. But the story of Ulik Keldroma didn't end there. His dance with the dark side, brief though it was, led him to do terrible things that he couldn't forgive himself for. He spent the next 10 years wandering the galaxy, trying to come to terms with himself. He ultimately settled on the remote, uninhabited ice world, Renva. There, a spacer named Hogon led him to an ancient, abandoned citadel which Ulik chose as his new home. On Renva, Ulik wallowed in despair, wishing for death to claim him. He was close to giving up on life when the spirit of Arka Jeth appeared to him, telling Ulik that even though he was cut off from the Force, he still had much to live for, inspiring Ulrik to keep going a little while longer. Not long afterward, a teenage girl showed up at his citadel, asking Ulrik to train her in the ways of the Jedi. She was Vima Sunrider, Nomi's daughter. After the Great Sith War, Nomi had become the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, and she became too involved in rebuilding the galaxy to train her daughter. Vima, enthralled by stories of Ulik before his fall, snuck away and managed to track Ulik to Renva. Ulik initially refused to train the girl, but Vima was stubborn, and he eventually relented, teaching her everything he knew. He took special care to teach her to beware of the dark side and to avoid following his path. Not long into Vima's training, Nomi tracked her daughter to Renvar and confronted her on Ulik, demanding Vima leave Renvar. Vima remained stubborn and eventually managed to convince her mother that Ulik was a good influence after all. But the trouble didn't end there. Nomi, in turn, had been followed by Silvar, a Cathar Jedi whose mate had been betrayed and killed by Exar Kun. The Cathar had hired Hogon to lead her to Ulik's citadel, where she attacked Ulik, seeking revenge. Upon realizing how deeply Silvar had been consumed by grief, however, Ulik threw away his lightsaber, refusing to defend himself any longer. The act brought Silvar back to her senses, and she too relented. Then, when it seemed all was well, Ulik was struck by a blaster bolt. Hogon, it turned out, had overheard part of the conversation, and out of a misguided desire to bring Ulik to justice, he gunned Keldroma down. The dismayed Jedi shooed Hogan away and returned to Ulrik just in time to watch his body fade away. Ulik became one with the Force, which Nomi took as a sign that he had indeed returned to the light. The story of Ulik Keldroma's life, death, and redemption comes from Tales of the Jedi. Not the animated miniseries, of course, but the original Old Republic comics from the 90s, which just so happened to have an identical name and logo to the unrelated series. Curious. Anyway, what do you think of Ulik Keldroma? We had to trim down his story quite a bit to fit it all in one video, so if you want to hear more, let us know in the comments section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.